Now, is the economy improving? All right, now we get into some trouble, okay? Uh, I'm going to give you Joseph Stiglitz, uh, only won a, a couple of Nobel Prizes on uh, uh, economics. Uh, let's see if he thinks the economy is improving. He's going to be talking to Bloomberg News here. Uh, let's go to clip number nine. The reasons the stock market is doing well is interest rates are very low. One of the reasons interest rates are very low is the general prognosis of the slow recovery. So whenever interest rates are very low, stock market prices are, are often very high. Secondly, businesses have been ruthless in firing workers, uh, pushing down wages. It's good for profits, but not for the overall economy. So the two are really diverging. Um, Wall Street is talking up uh, the recovery because it likes to stale, sell stocks. But I just came back from the American Economic Association meetings in Atlanta, and there the sentiment among the economists was almost universally very pessimistic. Stieglitz also suggested that the U.S. government may have not have learned any lessons from the financial meltdown. In the United States, we have done nothing about the too big to fail with banks. We have done nothing, or almost in uh, very little, about the derivatives that cost the American taxpayers $180 billion just in the bailout of AIG. While there may be complacency downtown in Manhattan, in Wall Street, uptown in academia, at Columbia, the only question is when is the next crisis going to happen? Look, man, that's a serious warning. When is the next crisis going to happen? Do you understand what he's saying? Stock market, oh, it's going up. So uh, people assume, oh, Obama's doing a good job stabilizing it or whatever. But he's saying, no, but that's disconnected from the real economy. The reason the stock market is going up is not because those companies in the country are doing better, you know, the small businesses, even large businesses. No, it's because interest rates are so low that that's driving a bubble in the stock market. Another disaster headed our way. Okay, you know what happens to the bubbles, they burst. And it's, it's because of fiscal policy in this case. And he said, look, Wall Street's not complaining because they're making crazy cash out of it. All right, he's only won a couple of Nobels, so you might, you know, best to ignore his advice. So let's go to Simon Johnson, another one of the most respected economists in the country at MIT. He's going to be talking to CNBC. They're not really liking what he's saying, but he's got warnings as well. Let's watch. Simon, all right, crisis is just beginning. What do you mean? I mean, Aaron, very simply that we now have a financial system that's completely based on moral hazard. They're too big to fail. All the big banks left standing believe that they are immune from any uh, future failure because uh, that's what happened in the last year. That's what Tim Geithner has told them. That's what Larry Summers has told them. And crazy things happen when you have a financial system like that. So what kinds of things might happen soon? I mean, all the bankers have come out. I mean, just what was it, a couple of days ago, Brian, uh, Moynihan, the new CEO of Bank of America, said, hey, we're worried about the economy, all that sort of stuff, but the crisis definitively in the rearview mirror. Wrong? Uh, definitely wrong. Really fascinating that this is their, their psychology. Uh, we're looking at emerging markets, and I think this is the next frontier for, for the crisis. Mm. You, there's a great carry trade, obviously, with cheap funding uh, from the U.S. The, the Fed is incredibly dovish, and that's not going to change. Money coming out of the U.S. or round-tripping through the U.S. from emerging markets, from rich people in Kazakhstan to the U.S., out to emerging market, maybe a Chinese, Brazilian investment, you're going to see a lot of frothiness. Now, the conventional wisdom is you can't have back-to-back -back major financial crises. I think we're going, to, we're going to push that. We're going to have a look and see whether that's true. The next 12 months could really be exciting. People could be very positive, but we are setting ourselves up for an enormous catastrophe. Oh, man. Here we go again. Isn't there anybody who comes on this show and doesn't see storm clouds on the horizon? What kind of catastrophe? Oh, what kind of catastrophe would you like? Look, your entire financial system, all the big players right now, the six, six yeah. major banks in the United States, their total balance sheet is over 60% of U.S. GDP. It got bigger during the crisis. All the big guys are, are out there looking to take risks. So, so would you, so would I, if we felt we were immune. If we had a get-out-of-jail-free card, wouldn't you, go, wouldn't you go take a lot of risks right now? Of course you would. Where do you take the risk? Well, it could be commodities, could be crazy things in the United States. I think, though, mostly it's going to be where everyone is sure the prices can only go up, and that's China, that's other emerging markets. Okay, uh, we're so hosed. <laughs> you know, the CNBC anchor there goes, Oh, man, why doesn't anybody come on and tell us something good news? 
Because there isn't. That's why every economist in the country that I've seen, all the respected ones saying, iceberg, straight ahead. You think two financial collapses can't happen in a row, but what Simon Johnson is telling you is, yes, it can. He says the next year will be exciting. I don't want that kind of excitement. I don't know, man. Is Obama listening? Does he have... Iceberg, straight ahead. You gave him a get out of jail free card. They took that to mean take more risk. Did you hear what Simon Johnson said there at the end? They have 60% of the GDP in the top banks. They got bigger. We can't let them go under now because they're so gigantic. So that means take more risk, take home more bonuses, and if it collapses, sad day for Obama, then we'll blame it on the Democrats. And by the way, you'll be right if you do. Because Democrats right now are driving this, or you know, driving this massive ship right into that iceberg. One last one from Simon here. If you weren't depressed enough, he drives it home in clip number 11. Simon, I want to come back to you on a statement you made earlier saying that the banks are taking on more risk and they have more assets or, or their balance sheets are bigger than ever. I, I don't see that. I mean, uh, most lending is down. Balance sheets are actually smaller. Leverage ratios are way down. And, you know, it's still not that easy to get a big company to, to uh, a big bank to make a commitment to you uh, anywhere near the way they did in 05, 06, and even 07. So what are you talking about? Well, you just, look, just look at the numbers, the, the latest numbers we have uh, through the end of the third quarter and what we're going to see in the fourth quarter. The banks obviously are being tight on the lending. Uh, Jamie Dimon made a great statement about, about this to the Goldman Sachs uh, Investor Conference uh, recently. I'm, I'm sure, you, sure you heard that. They're being tight on the lending, but they, they, they see great opportunities in, in markets, in over-the-counter derivatives, for example, in all kinds of foreign exchange operations. They are taking a lot of risk. Now, if they, they may tell you they're not, that may, I think, just speaks to the fact they don't understand the risk they're getting into. The meeting being held today by the Bank for International Settlements in, in, in Basel is exactly a confirmation of the point that I'm making. The officials are worried, but they don't know what to do about it because they've allowed them to become, the banks to become too big to fail. They're really in a hard spot. They don't want to raise rates right now, but they see the banks acting, beginning to act in a seriously irresponsible manner. What are they going to do? They should break up the big banks, but they don't have the political goal to do that right now. All right, Simon, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, Simon. Really appreciate it. All right, again, they're taking the risk because they know they can. What I liked was the schmuck NBC, uh, CNBC anchor is like, well, I don't get it. You know, they're not really lending, so I don't see it on their uh, record books. He's like, yeah, because we can't see their derivatives. The real risk is not in what they're lending to companies. That's not a problem at all. The problem is in the derivatives. When are you going to get that? <laughs> By the way, the CNBC guys drive me crazy with their stupid fake, you know, business attire where they take off the jackets. Why are you taking off your jacket? Right? They take it off because, like, that's how the guys at work are. They got no jacket, but they got their tie on. That's how guys on Wall Street look. Everything about television is so fake, it drives me out of my mind. 